I made it back. So, hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. Coming up in the news this week, I explain where I've been on the moon. Ben says where he thought I was. Morocco. And I say Andrew. Andrew. Also, the audio for this week's episode is going to be god awful and there's absolutely nothing I can do about it, so I'm really, really sorry. But hopefully, it'll be fixed for next week. Starting off the news this week, the Orion spacecraft has been moved to NASA's famous Vehicle Assembly Building, or VAB, in preparation for the mission Artemis 1 in early 2022. Artemis 1 is the first major step in NASA's program to send humans back to the moon within the next decade, with the Artemis 2 also using the Orion spacecraft, being a crewed mission that will send astronauts on a flyby around the moon in September of 2023. The launch vehicle that will be used is NASA's SLS launcher, which has been under construction since the end of last year. The SLS is also at the VAB. Orion won't be the only manned space vehicle in NASA's new program, however, with the contract being awarded back in April to SpaceX to use their Starship vehicle for lunar landings. In other news, the UK government has announced further plans and funding to reach their net zero carbon targets by 2050 ahead of this year's COP26 climate summit in Glasgow. The plan focuses particularly on electric cars, giving grants to owners and manufacturers and also pledging money to add relevant infrastructure like charging stations around the country. It also looks at reducing emissions from buildings, increasing tree planting and peat restoration, nuclear power and carbon recapture. While the amount of funding going to the UK's net zero carbon goal is large, and this list is extensive, critics have pointed out that there are still some holes in efficiently reaching net zero, as this plan has not covered reducing meat consumption and has had a very limited look at the aviation industry. And now over to Ben with some... Thanks Doug. Also in this week's news is an interesting paper describing some very small specimens of pterosaurs found in the famous Kemkem beds of Morocco, as well as why these finds are quite so significant. The study explains how the Cretaceous saw a trend of pterosaurs reaching very large sizes, whilst smaller and medium-sized forms, which had been common in the Triassic, Jurassic and early Cretaceous, started to become very rare in the late Cretaceous. The reason for this size trend was considered to be due to the diversification of birds, which subsequently displaced smaller and medium-sized pterosaurs from their niches. However, these newly described pterosaur finds from Morocco indicate that a switch from small to giant size did not occur in the Cretaceous, but instead an increase in the range of sizes, with very small and giant sizes occurring. Additionally, analysis of the small pterosaur bones reveals that these small forms were actually immature individuals. The paper therefore concludes that the niches previously held by small pterosaurs were increasingly taken over by young, immature individuals of giant pterosaur species, and not by birds. A very interesting idea that shows how successful pterosaurs were, even towards the end of the Cretaceous period. And finally for this week is the news that a new genus and species of mid-Eocene-aged proboscidean has been described. This new species, named Dagbatitherium tassii, comes from a quarry in Togo, and is actually highly significant due to the time in which it was found, since a long gap of 13 million years did exist in the African proboscidean fossil record, but this new find fills that gap. Additionally, Dagbatitherium, which is known from a lower molar, displays many characteristics of an elephantiform, with the researchers classifying this animal as a stem elephantiform, and therefore pushing back the origin of this lineage 10 million years earlier than we'd previously realised, a very significant discovery indeed. Back to Doug in the studio. Thank you, Ben. Just quickly before we finish up this week, we'd like to give an honourable mention for another very interesting study on pterosaurs. This time, one that investigated the flight performance of these animals. It's a fascinating study that I'd recommend you go and read, but we just had to include it to show off possibly the greatest scientific figure that has ever passed peer review and ended up in an actual journal. Yes, this is a real figure from the paper, and it's wonderful. Anyway, that's all. Uh, it's a very good study, and cheers to Andrew for sending that in to us. I do hope you enjoyed this week's 7 Days of Science, and as always, we'll see you next week.